What you're looking at is the Round Hay Garden Scene, the earliest known surviving film. Recorded in October of 1888, it worked by taking a series of pictures in rapid succession of one another. When played back together, it made a movie. Thomas Edison first visualized the movie ca making camera in 1888. He called his idea the kinetoscope. It was first demonstrated in 1893 and went public later that same year. It was a large device, but was cutting edge for the time and was the birth of the film camera. Shortly after the first cameras were made, the film and cinema industry became a big part of American culture and the first films that were made were silent films. These had no dialogue and when use of dialogue was needed, they had a black screen with text to express the dialogue from that scene. In 1927, Al Jolson released The Jazz Singer. This is credited to be the first film to have used the use of sound and dialogue integrated into it. Nobody else is. My little mammy. My heart strings are tangled around. Alabama. Mammy, I'm coming. In 1934, Bell and Howe were released one of the first portable film cameras. It was a lot smaller in size than cameras of years before and had the film encased in a plastic cassette, allowing for films to be made in sunlight rather than in blacked out rooms. With the advent of the Kodachrome color film in 1935, color films were now a reality and Wizard of Oz was one of the first feature length color films in America. For any in the middle, in trouble or in pain. With the thoughts you'd be thinking you could be. After World War II, movie cameras became smaller and simpler and allowed the average consumer to become a filmmaker themselves, creating home movies of their own special moments which could be easily shared with others. In 1965, Kodak released the Super 8 camera, which was considered one of the most popular cameras for home movies and was a step up from the previous cameras used shortly after World War II. As the 1980s dawned, so did new methods of recording movies. The Sony Beta movie camera, released in 1982, used video cassettes to record movies. Sony also made the Betamax, which was an early VCR for watching the movies you recorded on beta cams. This was a lot simpler than having to set up a film projector for watching movies only a few years ago. The quality of video was also greatly improved. As the 90s came, cassettes got much smaller and dawned the age of the camcorder for the next decade. But as computers became more and more integrated into the world, the camcorder slowly lost steam and the use of digital cameras became the standard across the United States. As personal computers became commonplace, software like Windows Movie Maker and iMovie allowed people to add special effects, titles and credits, and edits to their home movies. Today, the movie camera itself is slowly becoming a thing of the past as smartphones can now perform all the same functions with higher quality and increased portability. Now people can quickly make movies on their phone and share them on social media for their friends to see within a matter of minutes. The movie camera has also gave birth to Hollywood and the film industry, which is a major part of American culture and has grown to be a $36 billion industry. It is nearly impossible for an American to go a day without seeing some short sort of video, whether it be the news, sports, or historical footage. Film has become a part of everyday life in American society. Movie cameras have also allowed Americans to watch history happen before their own eyes. From watching footage from the beaches of Normandy during D-Day, to watching Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon in 1969, movie cameras have allowed us to experience some of society's biggest achievements and tragedies without having to leave our homes. Entered the lamb. They have been in it for several hours, checking it out. The last word is that all systems are performing very well. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Talk about Christmas miracles. Movie cameras have also allowed us to be able to not only watch historical events but allow us to watch and rewatch the most memorizing sports plays like the Immaculate Reception by Franco Harris or what is now known as the greatest catch of all time by Odom Beckham Jr.